Hey everybody, I uh, just decided to uh, go for a little flight. This is between Buvika and uh, Busha, right outside of Trondheim, a little bit west of Trondheim. Uh, this place is a very familiar place to me, I used to drive here a lot. Uh, it's the old way I take when I go out of my cabin. Uh, and the particular spot is very impressive, you have a couple of nice uh, vertical cliffs right behind the camera right now. I consider it to be one of the more interesting places to fly my drone. It's really beautiful here. So, we had some nice weather, nice warm weather actually. The sun was shining and everything, but uh, it was a little slow to get out, so when I got there, the clouds had started covering up the, covering up the sky and uh, it started raining. This is the um, motorway, the new road that goes between Trondheim and Orkonger. And uh, just like to overfly it and just see what it looks like from the air. Very interesting uh, terrain as well. There's a lot of interesting birds you can hear in the forests here as well. Um, not sure what the, you call them in uh, English. You can hear everything from crows and uh, seagulls and all, all kinds of birds here, actually. At this point, the drone is fairly new to me. Um, I've flown drones before, but it's re not really been... I, I really don't, don't have that much experience with this one. So I decided to go out and see how far I could get it to fly and test out the capabilities, max range, and see how it would uh, behave. And uh, right now we are like, I don't know, half, uh, half a kilometer away from my position controlling and I decided to do a sideways pan of the old road past some of the cliffs here. Uh, you can't see it right here, but um, perhaps you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, to the left of the camera, that used to be a place where people dumped their uh, cars in the fjord just to claim insurance back during the 70s and 80s and early 90s. Eventually, the uh, police and the uh, insurance companies got wind of this and uh, there were some very um, should I say less than uh, impressed people when uh, that became public knowledge at this point I decided to cross the fjord at this point of crossing, I think we are looking at approximately three kilometers, two or three kilometers uh, flight distance. The ridge you can see uh, back there, uh, the farthest one, that's uh, the tallest mountains uh, on the west side of town, Biomarka as we call it. And the uh, little settlements you can see there uh, at the foot of those hills, that's uh, Spongdar. A little fun fact while we're flying uh, across the fjord here is uh, I was uh, experiencing a lot of uh, errors on the DJI app. It said a lot of uh, aircraft uh, interference, aircraft signals interference. This really bugged me out. I couldn't see any other drones flying, I couldn't see any other people flying drones anywhere, but for some reason I kept getting these interference uh, warnings. And on top of that, that's the reason why you see that I stop up a couple of times there and um, await uh, control inputs. 
I'm going to explain a little bit uh, further when we get closer here. DJI drone does about uh, 8 meters per second in the point mode or P mode as I prefer flying in. You can get it up to 14 meters per second in the speed mode, S mode. And then you have the C mode which I really haven't uh, played around with. Right here I think I for some reason managed to pan the camera downwards. Uh, really don't know why. Yeah, and this is where things started to get interesting with the signal. Now it starts responding again. As you can see, I'm uh, getting close to the other side. I was hoping to get to... Uh, yeah, you can see it now. Back there it was a little bonfire burning up uh, old leaves stuff. There, over the hill there, you see Booby go. That's, uh, you see the uh, green silo there. But behind that uh, little hill you have in the middle of the view there, you saw the shower falling down. It was uh, really heavy rain. And a fun, uh, fun little detail about that particular Uh, place. But they initially, when they were building the new road, had to go between uh, the Gogin and the uh, Drummer. They had uh, proposed putting it on stilts in the water all the way from uh, the bay here. Not this bay, but uh, in the inner bay of Fjord, and all the way out along the land here eventually cutting into uh, the mountains uh, with a tunnel uh, somewhere uh, between Bursa and Vigya. That's uh, approximately 12 kilometers further out. Right now I've engaged the return to home function because the drone started not responding to my commands at all. So I uh, just put it into uh, return home. Start waiting. Now the gimbal are uh, the gimbal seems to be responding properly to commands again. If you're into diving and you ever visit this area, uh, there's a lot of people who prefer to dive around these uh, parts of the old world between Trondheim uh, and Apertkogne. Especially between Buvika and Pushan. Uh, it's a very popular diving place. You have some very interesting uh, depth drops. And you can pretty much during the summertime or the summer half of the year. See a lot of divers parking next to the road and putting on diving gear and going out into the water. Now, here's a little uh, fun detail. You're not going to see it now, but in a few minutes you will see me going out looking for something on the ocean. There was a little disturbance in the water, I could see, and uh, <clears throat> it either looked like a very low thingy, or it could be a uh, RC controlled uh, speedboat or something, but I, I just couldn't get my eyes around what it was, and uh, decided to go out and investigate. Yeah, I'm that high. 
uh, about 60 something meters. You can see me there. So I decided to not land, just uh, you know, and fly a little bit around the cliff and have a little look at things. This little metal bolt up there was uh, flicking a little bit in the light, so I just wanted to see what it was. Then there was this bird that, before I flew in here, uh, f came in and took refuge in the trees here. I was wondering if I could get to see it. It looked like a cross between a crow and a falcon. Uh, I guess it probably a, it's probably just a crow, a crow with a, some sort of, uh, I don't know, crow and animal anabolic steroids or something. But yeah, I couldn't find it. Right now I decided to uh, try to have a look at what's underneath the bridge here. And uh, took a little bit of repositioning, both of me and the drone, um, to make sure that I was doing this safely. Fun fact here. When you're flying a drone like this, it's um, it's not easy flying in close quarters. I mean, the Norwegian regulations state that you need to have eye contact with the drone at all times. Uh, visual line of sight, that is called, technically. And then you have to reposition yourself to be able to do it. And the thing is, it looks so spacious underneath that bridge, but in reality, it's not. It's really tight. I'm really cautious about flying underneath overhangs like this, especially this bridge, because I don't know how the drone will behave to it when it loses uh, GPS signals. Or if it's just going to go into... Uh, uh, what you call uh, complete monkey brain mode and descend, uh, decide to uh, ascend into the bridge in order to get up to its return to home altitude. So I was a little cautious about that. Oh looky, here's a boat. A boat with a uh, pretty good engine it seems, outboard. 
and he has some sort of uh, fishing equipment here as well. Might be that he's looking for crawfish or crabs. Tends to be a lot of uh, those people fishing for it around these parts. I do find it intriguing that he's hiding the boat at this location though, and he, all his gear here where people are definitely bound to not find it or not go looking for it. So I don't know if he's doing this legally or if it's uh, some sort of illegal operation, I don't know. I guess that's one benefit of having drones available readily. You can go around uh, looking at things like this and uh, discover where people hide their stuff. I don't know about you guys, but it looks to me that this boat haven't been used in a while. So, out we go. And I believe at this point I had to return back to change the batteries because my batteries were blown. And here we are with the old parking lot, my old trusty uh, Golf TDI. Uh, by the way, that's one of the cars that I have. Uh, I'd say it's one of the, the best cars I've ever driven. Very stable, very reliable, and it just gets you anywhere. Of course, this is not the standard uh, rear-wheel drive uh, option. This is the um, four motion. So, 2006 model served me quite well. And that's me. That's my car. And uh, 